This video gives instructions on how to set up a roadside unit, also known as an RSU. By the end of this video, you will understand the different parts of an RSU, how to mount an RSU, how to connect an RSU to other roadside equipment, and how to connect to a computer to send status check commands. This is an RSU. An RSU is a computer with a radio that broadcasts and receives connected vehicle messages. RSUs may include various types of radios including DSRC, Wi-Fi, cellular V2X, and cellular modems. The specific radios included will depend on your system's design. The RSU has several connectors depending on your specific RSU and requirements. Please note that this installation focuses on the DSRC radio. Other applications may require different antenna to be installed as well. This is the Global Positioning System Antenna, also known as the GPS antenna, which allows the RSU to determine its location and synchronize time, which is critical to the timing of transmissions. This is the GPS antenna that connects to the GPS connector. These antenna connectors are used for wireless communication. Typically, wireless communication antennas are provided with the RSU. These antennas use a standard type of connection and you can buy replacements that will screw into the same connectors. Antennas can be connected by attaching them to the RSU as per the manufacturer's instructions. Connecting the antennas correctly along with proper orientation during mounting will ensure optimal performance. Different RSUs have different requirements. Based on the manufacturer's instructions, you may need to have the wireless communication antennas connected before powering on the RSU. Be sure to read your specific RSU setup instructions for special requirements. Always make sure to verify the antenna requirements before connecting to the Power Over Ethernet injector. To broadcast and receive connected vehicle messages, an RSU needs both power and a network connection. Most RSUs use a single Category 5, also known as Cat5, or better Ethernet cable with Power Over Ethernet, also known as PoE, for both power and data. The maximum allowable length of the PoE cable is 300 meters. This setup connects to a standard register jack 45 connector, more commonly known as RJ45, on both ports. RJ45 connectors are similar to a telephone jack, but wider. To add power to a Cat5 cable, you'll need a device called a Power Over Ethernet Injector. The Power Over Ethernet Injector sits in between the RSU and other roadside equipment and converts 110 volt AC power to the vendor specified power output required by the RSU. Note that this is considered low voltage and carries almost no risk of electrocution. In addition to the PoE, the installation requires an Ethernet surge protector installed between the RSU and the PoE inserter. The surge protector must be properly grounded to the cabinet grounding system and the cabinet grounding system must be bonded to a good earth grounding system to ensure that the electrical components in the RSU are protected from any surges in power. To set these connections up, you'll need three Cat5, Cat5e, or Cat6 Ethernet cables. Remember that the RSU will be outdoors, so use cable and connectors that are rated for outdoor use. Connect a cable's RJ45 connector to the RSU, then to the surge protector. Connect the second cable between the surge protector and the PoE injector's out port. Connect the PoE injector's power cord to a 110 volt power source. It is necessary to ensure that the power source to the PoE injector is protected, stable, and always on. Lastly, connect the in port on the PoE injector to roadside network equipment, traffic controller, or your computer depending on the method you plan to use to configure the RSU. Lights on the RSU, PoE injector, and roadside equipment will show you if the devices are powered on and receiving data. These lights can be device specific, so be sure to check with each device's operating manual to monitor that they're connected. For the RSU, there are two lights, one for power and one for software status. As soon as the RSU receives power from the PoE injector, a green LED to indicate power status will come on. A second LED will flash green while the device is starting up, stay green when the device is ready, stay amber when the device is updating its firmware or software, or stay red when there is a problem with the device. 
Certain RSUs may also use patterns of flashing lights to indicate whether the RSU's programs are working. Check your specific RSU's operating manual to see what these patterns mean. The last piece of equipment is the mounting bracket. This is generally a part of the RSU package and will fit your specific RSU. An RSU broadcasts messages best when there is an uninterrupted line of sight from the antennas to vehicles on the road. Typically, the device will have external DSRC antennas to maximize the range. The GPS receiver must always be pointed up for the best operation. To get maximum transmission range, mount your RSU on either a freestanding pole or on a traffic signal pole. If you are mounting an RSU to an intersection with a mast arm, try to get the RSU as close to the center of the intersection as you can, but at least make sure the device has a line of sight to all of the intersection approaches. Once mounted, ground the RSU with a grounding wire, if included in your mounting setup. The grounding cable has minimum size requirements based on the expected current surge. If a cable is not provided by the RSU vendor, then such a cable meeting minimum requirements must be procured and secured to the RSU chassis and an accessible earthing point. The next step is to configure the RSU using a computer. All standard RSUs will have an RJ45 Ethernet connection, so connect to the RSU using your own computer's Ethernet connection as well. Depending on the operating system of the computer, you may need to install a terminal application capable of secure shell, commonly known as an SSH client. For this example, we are using a Linux operating system. RSUs act like most network connected devices with an IP address. Your RSU manufacturer should provide you documentation on your RSU's default IPv4 or IPv6 address. For IPv4-based connections, your computer must be on the same subnet as the RSU. To be on the same subnet, the first three octets of the IPv4 address of your computer need to be the same as the RSU. The fourth octet has to be a different number. For example, if the IPv4 address of the RSU is 192.168.0.50, then the IP address of your computer may be 192.168.0.51. Once you have an SSH client and have set your IP address, you are ready to communicate with the RSU. First, try to ping the RSU. Pinging a device sends a small amount of data to the device and requests data back. You can use this method to see if the devices are connected at all. In Linux, use the command ping and then the IP address. From the Windows command line, use the command ping, all lowercase and then the IP address. If the RSU is connected and you have the right IP address, you will see responses that scroll down your screen. Next, you will connect to the RSU using your SSH client. You'll need the default username and password from your RSU manufacturer. In this case, the Linux command to connect SSH is SSH, all lowercase, space, the username for the RSU, space, at, space, the IP address of the RSU. The SSH client will ask for the password. Certain RSUs may also have a web interface to configure various parameters of the RSU. This feature may be used instead of SSH and may be accessed in most cases by navigating to the IP address of the RSU or using instructions provided by the vendor. You will also want to change the password for the RSU over SSH and web interface to ensure security. Be careful because the default usernames and passwords are widely known and if you don't change them during setup, any malicious entities may easily access the RSU. Follow instructions from your manufacturer on how to change the default username and password. Now, with the SSH client connected, you can follow your manufacturer's instructions on how to turn on specific applications. Another way to access the RSU after the IP address is known is by using simple network management protocol, SNMP, if supported by the RSU. An SNMP Management Information Base, or MIB, browser may be required to identify the various object identifiers, or OIDs, to configure the various parameters of the RSU. You may use the SNMP set command to set values for the various parameters. Once values have been configured, you may use SNMP walk to obtain a subset of values, or SNMP get to obtain the values for specific parameters. 
you will need to know the IP address and configuration port of the RSU to use SNMP. SNMP is especially useful when multiple RSUs need to be configured with the same parameters using a script. Let's review what we've learned. First, we pointed out the major connections of an RSU. Next, we talked about how to connect and power the RSU. We learned how to connect the RSU to the roadside equipment to provide power and communications including surge protection and grounding. Next, we talked about how to mount the RSU. Lastly, we talked about how to connect a computer to an RSU to complete the setup. By applying the knowledge from this video, you are ready to send and receive messages from the infrastructure side of your connected vehicle system. Follow along with the rest of the video sequence as we discover other vital system components.